as of June 2024, LEGO have just given us the fifth battle pack available right now. If you're wondering what the fifth one is, the Hoth battle pack is still available here in the UK. And I've got a feeling that the 501st and 332nd are probably going to be retiring the end of this year. I did actually pick up some 332nd, but you'd already know that if you were a part of the members discord. Please do consider joining. We're having some great conversations and come to think of it, I might need to add a Lego deals channel because I got these for a really, really good price. But let's waste no time and take a look at the five in their glory. And here we have all five of the battle packs from the recent one in June of 24. Then we got January of 2024. Then we have, I think this was released in July of last year. It might have been June, pretty sure it was July. And then we have January of 2023. And I'm assuming the Hoth Trooper was sometime in 2022 if it retired at the end of last year. It must have been about two and a half years old. But that one stands out. Actually, that and the Mando. We've got a nice meaty sandwich here. We've got the Clone Troopers as the fill-in. And then we've got the Imperials as, I guess, the bread and a few Mandos at the end. But I think one thing's for certain, LEGO definitely know how to make a battle pack. This first one came with a speeder. I think the only time we've seen it on screen is actually in The Mandalorian. It was around this time, so a great speeder battle pack. And a nice few rocky caves. They've definitely returned to the slopes with the Mandalorian battle pack. And then we got this AV-7 cannon, which is from the Clone Wars movie, I think is the first time that we see it pop up. And then we got some Battlefront 2 troopers. This was a great battle pack, not only for the macro binoculars there, but also just for the figures in general. Two heavies, an officer and a specialist. Some great troopers. Speaking of some great troopers, we then got the Ahsoka clone troopers or the 332nd Legion split from the 501st for the final Clone Wars mission. And that includes Captain Vaughn, two in from the right over there, and three regular troopers, the two of which on the left do have a blue jump pack. And then we also have the Clones versus Battle Droids battle pack. Hopefully not the last one. I'd love to see another one in this style. Perhaps get some other droidicas and perhaps even a tactical droid in the next one instead of the giant tri-droid. Have a little build with a tactical droid like a flintlock speeder would be pretty cool. But this battle pack did come with four clone troopers, just like the last two that came before it. But instead of just including clones, this one cost a bit extra, come with two B1 battle droids, three B2s, and the build was focused on this giant three-legged tri-droid, which is meant to represent the bigger one. It's almost the size of the smaller one, but we'll take a look at alternate builds in a second. It also came with a bark speeder, 25 years of Lego Star Wars. This bark speeder is based off the very first design Lego made, which is actually based off a quick flash of it in Revenge of the Sith. So they definitely took a few more liberties than they would now. A little barricade for the clones, a small box down here, which is something we see continue over to the next one. And then we also got a STAP or a STAP with the B1 to ride. It actually gave us some brand new B1s because it matched two of the arms on both of those. So I'm sure many of us just switched the arms around. And in the most recent, you've probably seen my review a few days ago, is this Mandalorian battle pack. And a bit different from the clone troopers, it included two factions like the clone versus droids, Mandos, and then the Imperial Commandos. And is based off the Mandalorian show, though is still a great battle pack nonetheless. So taking a closer look at the minifigures for the battle packs, I have tried to level the playing field and by that, I mean, I've just removed the droids from the one earlier this year. In 2024, the droids will be looked at separately. And I think there's a few good points to make about the droids. But all of them come with four typical Lego minifigures. By that, I mean they're made of the legs, torsos, heads. All of them actually are made with a specific helmet. None of them come with extra hair pieces, though. I think it's safe to say for all of these characters, that does make sense. We do have a... Hoth version of the Scout Trooper, which does come with the grey arms instead of the black that we see on the Endor Scout Trooper. And then we've got three of the newer versions of Hoth Troopers. These have come in a few other sets. I'm not sure if they were in the latest 8080 playset, but I know for sure they're in the UCS model. And I think personally, that new helmet does wonders for the figure. We then move on to the Battlefront 2. As I said, 
These are based on the different classes you could play as on the Battlefront 2 game. But we are missing one. We've got a heavy, we've got a specialist, we've got another heavy, and we've got an officer. The reason they are missing out on the assault, which you could say there's one heavy, one assault, they are mentioned as two heavies on the box art. But the reason we don't have an assault is an assault is just a regular clone trooper. So I'm sure loads of people had some assault classes from the 2020 battle pack, which was a bit bigger to the 2024 battle pack. So if you would like to see the comparison between the 2020 and the 2024 battle pack, definitely let me know in the comments. And that's definitely something I can make happen. I've just got to find all the pieces and rebuild it. But similar to the 501st, we then have the 332nd. It's nice to be getting that helmet back because the first time we got it, we got it without the helmet holes on the side. I really hope helmet holes are going to be in all clone helmets going forward because it helps make custom clones, especially named clones like Vaughn, who is three in. It's not going to be a popular choice for many, this Vaughn minifigure. But the only thing that identifies him apart from the rest is the little Captain lapel on as I said in my review, his left pec here. Let me know down in the comments if there's any custom clone troopers that can be made using this piece. Obviously, they'll have to be a part of the 501st. I don't really think we saw this Captain Lapel on any of the other clone troopers, let alone just in the 501st. But we do get three, 330 second. And there's a really cool feature. I mentioned it in my original comparison last year, though I'm sure many of you probably weren't around at that point where if you swap the helmets of both of these troopers, you end up with four almost plain 501st Phase 2 troopers. You do have the different design on the heavy troopers, but at least for the Specialist and Officer, if you swap the helmets with two from the 332nd Battle Pack, you end up with not only two regular 501st Assault Class troopers, but also some specialised 332nd clone troopers, which you can see over to the right on my clone display, I have done exactly that and given myself some different classes of clone troopers on the right. You can see the 501st specialist classes and then under Vaughan on the left, we've got the same classes but with the 332nd, which I'm afraid didn't make it into the game as the plug on Battlefront 2 got pulled way too early and... In fact, we barely got any of the legions. We got a load of the popular ones, but there was definitely more they could have done. Now, that is not all for clone troopers in battle packs. We do, of course, have the Coruscant Guard, otherwise exclusive to the Coruscant Guard gunship. So it was an interesting choice to put one in here. I'm very happy they did. It allowed me to get my hands on one before I got the Coruscant Guard gunship, which I only got about a month and a half ago. So. I was very happy to get one of them and you can see they do have arm printing that is not how they arrive in the set i'm afraid not yet for these clones the only time arm printing has been used is on rex fives and possibly a few other clone troopers but these arms are from firestar toys and if you do want to purchase these i do have a discount code to get you 10 percent off and it does also give me some benefits so please do feel free to use it if you are shopping on firestar not just for printed arms but really for anything. I'll leave it linked down in the description for you to copy and paste. And we also get three shiny clone troopers as well. I'm not sure if I mentioned that now, but they are exclusive to this battle pack. And it's really, really cool to get our hands on some plain phase twos in the new 2020 style printing. The battle pack that LEGO have just released does come with two Mandos and two Imperial Commandos. It's about time we got some Imperial Commandos, a little different to the Rebel style, but They'd still look great in a Rebels mock. And in fact, these Mandalorians also work in a Rebel style armor in the nice blue color as they are loyalists to Bo-Katan. And they all tend to be blue rather than the colorful ones we see in Din Djarin's covert. But I'm sure they'll all probably go into update their armor now and go back to the blue we used to see in, in Clone Wars. So the minifigures are really cool. If I had to rank them... I think my favourite are definitely the 332nd Clone Troopers, followed closely by the 501st. And although it was really, really cool to see some shiny Clone Troopers, and I couldn't have made my custom Wilco from the Bad Batch without them, I'm going to put the Mandalorians and Imperial Commandos above them. I really do like these, and the Imperial Commandos especially. It's really cool that we finally got a helmet mold for them as well as all the other new helmet molds we're getting. And then we've got the other clone battle pack. And last, but definitely not least, 
is the half troopers i really like the scout but i do think it would have been better if we got four snow troopers especially with the ucs 8080 people don't want a load of this scout trooper whereas with the specialists any of these clone troopers really they are really fun to get loads of and i think because of the build of this it's probably going to be a one-off taking a look at the builds they don't really look that impressive. I don't know, some of them. This cannon does look pretty cool, and so does the Tridroid. But I think for the most part, they aren't that impressive without the minifigures. The minifigures definitely make the battle pack what we have come to love over all these years. In fact, I've been collecting battle packs for 15 years now. So I've definitely seen my fair share. And perhaps one day I can do a review of every single battle pack that LEGO have come out with. But for now... I'll stick to just doing the ones I can get my hands on. Starting off with the Hoth Trooper Battle Pack. There are a few weapons you might not have seen in the minifigure reviews. And that is because I have placed them on and around these models. In fact, the first one is the Extra Stud Shooter Pieces. And on most of these models, you will find them actually clipped to the model itself. Let me get a bit more light on this so you can see exactly what I mean. I've studied down the two extra red studs we get for this stud shooter on the side of the gun itself and a lot of the time you can do this you can put them either side so that when you are displaying this on your shelf no one knows that there are a few extra studs studded behind unless you tell them and show them off as a cool feature but you do have the spare pieces hidden away and likewise with the scout minifigure they're going to be riding this speeder so they've got no time to hold out their pistol although you could have them holding it we do see it in the endor chase scene but I've given the macro binoculars to another minifigure and just clip the pistol behind these rocks here in case the scout will need it later on. The rest of the build, it's a lot of white slopes and unless you're building a winter village on a hill or perhaps you can use these for some roof tolls, it's not the greatest. You can mock out the speeder, turn it to minifigure scale, perhaps even make it a bit bigger or add some of these slopes to make it armoured up and a bit beefier but we'll take a look at alternate builds and compare the mockability in a minute and we will also be weighing these to see which is the better value later on now we have the turret once again you can see that second heavy troopers rifle has been clipped to the side there though a big problem that i found with this is if we take the heavy trooper put him on the turret of course this is just going to be stationary perhaps move slowly forward but if you were to pick the model up and want to move it play with it then any second now the clone trooper will fall off to be fair it's not actually that bad i did complain about it in my review and it was the biggest problem with the set we do have one of the bigger flick fire missiles which just shoots out of the cannon and that does work it's a bit lower than the actual turret itself but it's a nice play feature it's a decent looking set i do think that the legs are still a bit too unstable on these clip joints the actual model has the legs coming out forward and directly out the back so they didn't need the hinges i would have much preferred a similar connection to the front so we could perhaps angle them rather than trying to turn them but i guess it's just something lego have added to make it fit on shorter shelves so you can display the legs spread just like that it's a weird feature but it does look really really cool personally i'd rather have a few of them sat on my shelf than some of these you can even pop it off of the legs and add it to a custom venetar display where you've got all the guns along the side and that's going to look really really cool so i do think it's a lot better than the half trooper and then we go one further and have the swamp speeder which is a really really nice build They've managed to pack it in about a quarter of the minifigure scout model. As I have picked up two more of these, I will be revisiting this. I know it's about a year old now. I'm not sure anyone will be interested, but I am going to revisit this and make a minifigure scout mock. Now I have enough pieces to build probably four or five of these if you include those rounded pieces off of Yoda's shuttle. So keep an eye out for that video and I look forward to making another set minifigure scout. It feels like it's been so long but something that I did make minifigure scout was this tri-droid and I mean the STAP, the STAP is pretty much minifigure scout. The bark speeder you know I think that does size up quite well to minifigure scout but of course proportions are a bit odd on that. It's nice to pay homage to the original Lego bark speeder. They've changed it a bit. 
updated it to keep it with the more modern looking Lego sets, but that tri droid is definitely the center of attention and to get a giant droid in Lego is really, really cool. Though, take away a few pieces and perhaps give us another step speeder. It might have made the set even more worthwhile. Now the recent set, I mentioned in my Discord, we've had many conversations about this. I really wanted to love it. And there are aspects of this that I do absolutely love. The fact that it does have a back is really, really cool. Once again, I've taken the blaster from the back, given it to my Mandalorian warrior, because I think the Night Owl just has to have the two little blasters. But it's mostly a sloped build. There's nothing on the interior. There's no workstation. There's not even a little computer or something would have been really cool to add on the inside. It looks like this arch is just more rock work in a cave. Instead of it being an actual facility, the only indication we have of it being a facility are these little glowing lights on the side. It's not too great. Perhaps it looks better with the other set and that's definitely what they had in mind when making this. We do have a little turret and this crate is actually really, really cool. In the last set, Actually, I don't know where I put the crate. I just had it a second ago. Ah, here we are. Here's the other builds. We also get a little barricade for this clones versus droid battle pack and this little crate which took absolutely no effort. So they've beefed it up for the Mando one. A lot of fans have actually really liked this design and displayed it around a few other sets. So this has the added brackets on the side to give it slopes and I'll probably also be modifying my one from the clone android battle pack to have a similar design to display amongst my ships. But the main selling point of this actual build is probably the play feature. You can display someone on that piece. And me personally, I'm going to take it, whack it on another build. But I really like that new display piece that you get loads of in the Avengers Tower. And I think that's probably going to replace the old one pretty quickly if it hasn't already. A stud shooter blaster, it's a decent build. There's nowhere to clip it on the set. I think. I would have much preferred if this was able to clip up on the top here and perhaps even if they just gave us a one by two with a jumper plate and enabled us to clip the stud into the bottom of that, it would have just meant so much more because it would mirror the Moff Gideon turret in the bigger battle pack play set. A load of people have been calling that a battle pack. That is not a battle pack. These are the only five official battle packs that are still available. And I didn't take a look at the droids. So let's take a look at them now. Before we take a look at the droids, let's have these ranked very quickly. I think my favorite is the tri droid. I really like the fact that they've used the bricks to actually build a character, though the swamp speeder itself is an amazing build. They're both tying for first place. Then we have the turret here in second place. The half speed is coming in third for me and I'm afraid this slopey build on the right is last place. So here are all the droids we get on top of the minifigures. It is an extra five pound. We can't say it's an extra 10 pound. Most of the other ones did cost 20 pound. And as far as price is concerned, I don't really know what's the better value until we start weighing these. But this droid definitely helps to increase the value of this, the tri droid on the right, but we did get two B1 battle droids and three of these brand new B2s. It's been a while since we got some B2s and I must say they were a welcome addition to this set. They're looking really, really cool. Slight updates on the body build as well, which is nice to see. Lego just haven't given us the older mold. Though for this B1 here, I actually have my own one that I've made because I do think Lego missed the mark with it. They did include on the back of the B1 a clip so that the blaster could be held whilst they were riding on the stab, but they could have made it look a bit nicer and given them a droid backpack that we see them use almost every appearance in the Clone Wars. All I added to create this was a one by two and one of them aerial pieces on top and make it all tan color so it fit in rather than the gray that really does stick out and I'll leave it up to you. I'll put up a community post. There's something I haven't said in a while. But there'll be a community post with both of these. Let me know which ones you prefer. But I think the left one just looks so much better. Also holds the weapon a bit further down so that when I turn it around, the weapon isn't stuck over the B1 shoulders like you can see with Lego's version. And it does hide it away a bit better. But now let's take a look at the mockability of these sets. As I've been doing Lego mocks here on the channel for at least eight, nine, coming up to 10 months. 
I have made a fair few mocks, starting off with my Endor slash Hoth speeder here, which is a minifigure scale version of this battle pack speeder. You can see the length is a little bit different. It's a bit shorter than the actual battle pack, but you can definitely use most of these pieces. I mean, most of these pieces are present in this model. Yeah, I've added a few extra pieces, especially looking at the back, but it's a strong start to making a minifigure scale model. They've made it a bit bigger for play scale. One's definitely easier to swoosh around in a kid's hand, and one is definitely meant for more larger mocks and bigger scale builds. But in the same battle pack, we get this blaster, and let's bring both of these forward, could take a closer look at them, because one of them has a stud shooter on top, and honestly, the only difference to the one that comes in the at, -AT playset and the one that's used in other builds around LEGO Star Wars has, instead of the stud shooter and the slope, a 1x2 jumper tile and then a roller blade on top, which is really cool to see that besides that, they are the same build. So if you've collected a few of these, you can definitely use these in any era of Star Wars. I mean, I'm not quite sure if they're used in the sequels. I don't really know what is used in the sequels, if I'm honest but they are used amongst the Rebels and Empire in the Age of the Empire. The Republic definitely use these. I'm sure you could whack a battle droid behind it and it will look just as good. Now onto my, one of my most popular mocks on the channel. In fact, this might be the most popular alternate build I have ever made. And that is the minifigure scale, bark speeder and sidecar from this swamp speeder. I do think it's quite a good build. It is a battle pack build, so expectations are already quite low. But I really like how this turned out with the blasters on the side and the front, and then you've got the longer blaster in the sidecar for this clone. It fits two minifigures. It's a nice and stable build, and yeah, no extra pieces. It holds together pretty well, and I'm very happy with how I got the shape of it. And I also think this did quite well because we were expecting the Grogu sidecar add. That turned out to be £25 for, basically for this to be fair, this is only £18, though most stores have it, at least 25% off, so you'll be able to pick it up a lot cheaper than Grogu's sidecar, but of course it does only come with four clone troopers rather than two and Keller and Beck, so it really depends on what you want. Most fans will be getting the new Bark Speeder and sidecar for Keller and Beck, but if you have a 330 second battle pack, you can still build one yourself and all the instructions for pretty much any custom build you see me reviewing or talking about in a video are on the members discord for brick tier members at completely no extra cost. So be sure to get yourself over there only £3 for the month and once you download the instructions, they're yours to build forever. And speaking of minifigure scale bark speeders, I said that I think this one in the battle pack is about minifigure scale. And yeah, it pretty much is. If I can get a good angle on that, you can see it sizes up to my minifigure scale build and it is a minifigure scale bark. So perhaps that is why they've made a few modifications and alterations to their older build. But a modification that is honestly so easy to make to this tri-droid to make it minifigure scale is to make it shorter. Take out the middle chunk of the leg. I know many of you will be saying, well, well no, that can't be right. It's a lot taller than that in the Clone Wars when it appeared in the Clone Wars movie. There's actually two versions of the Tridroid. This is the smaller one. If you want to go big, you're going to need a lot more space because they are honestly about that tall. I think it's meant to be like 50 bricks tall if you were to flip your bricks on the side. It's something crazy like that. So honestly, take my word for it. I tried building the small one. There's no way you can get the legs to be stable enough. If you want to see me attempt it, go check out my old review and alternate build. But stick to the smaller one for your displays and you'll thank me later. As far as the step speeder goes, we got one in the advent. The advent is pretty much perfectly minifigure scale. Well, how do we know the scale of the step? We know the height of it and this matches the height. This speeder here is actually one brick too tall at the bottom here. You can see this uses a smallest slope piece. It's actually a one by four. And though the battle pack step does also use a one by four slope, it includes a one by one slope next to it. So it's actually one by five. If you do have one of these smaller slopes in this color, a one by three slope, you can easily modify it and add that to make it mini figure scale. But I don't think it's really a problem. I think 
we can say this is basically minifigure scout and it works. So there's no alterations that need to be made to this. It's pretty much a decently minifigure size battle pack, of course, you couldn't have a tri-droid looking the same height as the staff and the same width as the speeder. It makes sense, Lego have blown that up a little bit, but that's basically a minifigure scale battle pack with a few extra pieces. So as for my favorite for mock building, it is this Swamp Speeder. Nothing to do with how many views the video has. I really love this model. And I also just love the pieces that come in this set. There's not a lot of them, but there's a lot of useful elements when it comes to mock building, especially these slope pieces here and it really is a fun set to break apart second place we do have the speed up third place has to be this battle pack because that tri droid does look really really cute and i'm afraid the other builds the av7 i did turn into an atrt walker it didn't go well it can't really hold itself up there's a lot of fragile joint pieces and smaller pieces in that set so it's not great for mock building, but at least it isn't a pile of slopes. So the Mandalorian battle pack does come in last. So we've got all of our battle packs here and our scales. Yes, that is a saucepan mark. We don't speak about that. And now let's take a look at which one is worth the most. What we're going to do is we're going to weigh them. And then I think what I did last time was divide the price by the grams. I've already done this with Captain Rex in my review. And I'll be honest, can't remember the value we got but that will be talked about afterwards i have a whole table to add these two so let's see which one gives you the more lego for your buck so the first battle pack up is the hoff trooper battle pack and if we can pile all these on i did reset it to zero beforehand just to make sure that we were only getting the value of the lego and that says 67 grams so on screen you'll see what that is worth in terms of the price divided by the grams but once again we'll talk about these all in a moment and next up if we just push these to the side make sure it's reset to zero and add i think we'll do these in order of release so the next one is the 501st specialist trooper battle pack which does look really really cool and that is 62 so a bit light up but we can see a pattern here i wonder if this is going to continue across at least the other two that are around the same price so we've got 60 i've even forgot the first one it's a good thing this camera is recording i think it was 69 62 and now time for the 332nd battle pack can't forget the swamp speeder 66 what a number for it to pick of course 332nd legion was only really in for one arc which included order 66 so that is definitely something the lego haven't planned for but is a really really fun coincidence and now we will be weighing the 2024 january wave battle pack but i want to get the easier one done first and that is the brand new mando battle pack i think it's going to be a bit more because we've got the big slope pieces and it is 86 grams so it is a bit more than the other two but also costs a bit more so perhaps between that and the Hoff one it will balance them both out and now time for the big one i don't know if all of this is going to fit i might have to get a bowl or something i'm just going to try and squeeze everything that i can onto the little space we have on the scale so if i can just balance these on top and hopefully we can still read this make sure nothing's fallen off the back it totals 108 grams that's almost double the first three and you're not paying anywhere near double so i wonder how these are going to line up compared to captain rex so the weights are in and it's looking very interesting a lot of these have paired up in fact there's five of them they haven't all paired up, but we do have two pairs of prices. The Snow Trooper Battle Pack comes in at 17.99, 67 grams. It actually works out 27 pence per gram. I think in my Rex review, I put 0.2p slash g. That's meant to be pound per gram, but I get now that it looks like pence. So I'm going to do all these in pence per gram. Rex is 21p just as a baseline. These are all more expensive than Rex. So it's quite nice to be getting Rex in quite a cheap set, though I would love to see what the price per gram of Luke's X-Wing is because that has double the pieces, 
for an extra pound or two. But the Snow Trooper Battle Pack, 18 pound, 67 pieces, 27 pence per gram. Same price for the 501st Clone Trooper Battle Pack, slightly less pieces, 62 pieces. We're down five pieces, up to pence, 29 pence per gram. A bit more expensive. Now, this is the same for the 332nd Ahsoka Clone Trooper Battle Pack. £19, 66 pieces. Great number, by the way. 29 pence per gram. But the interesting thing is the next two. The Clone Trooper and Battle Droid Pack, £25. A bit more expensive, but it is the heaviest of the 508 grams. So, it does come in at 23 pence per gram. Almost the same price as the Rex Y-Wing and... Also released the same year as the Rex Y-Wing. So actually, these sets are getting cheaper. Okay, they're not getting cheaper. The Hoff Trooper was cheaper than the two last year. But this year is cheaper than last year. So we're actually getting better value for our money, even though sets are getting more expensive. And it doesn't seem to follow that when you're looking at piece counts. The Ambush on Mandalore, as I said, pairs up to the Clone Trooper Battle Droid. £20, 86 pieces. Another 23 pence per gram. So it's interesting seeing the trend here. I think this is a much better metric than looking at price per piece. It is a bit silly when you're looking at battle packs that either have a bunch of small pieces trying to build a cannon. I've still got them here on the desk. This has a bunch of small pieces, but it is nice to see there is a trend. Lego sets are getting cheaper. Smaller Lego sets are getting cheaper. If we did this with the UCS sets, I wonder what the Venator's price per gram is or pound per kilogram of that scale is compared to the gunship, compared to the Falcon, the 8080 and all the other UCS sets. If any of you have all the UCS sets and would like to weigh them for me and calculate the prices, I would be very grateful if you left the answers down in the comments. But it turns out the battle packs this year are cheaper than last year and the year before. The Hoth battle pack included. So... I guess they are the better battle pack. Though, with that in mind, this Swamp Speeder is definitely my favourite of the battle pack. I own more of these than any of them. Now, I've picked up three of these. The two that I picked up were the only duplicates I've got. I think I got two of the specialist battle packs as well. As for the other ones, the 2024 one, I've only picked up one. I don't know how. I've seen it for £20 out there and I've been so tempted to pick it up. If it drops to 15 I feel sorry for my bank account. But I also only picked up one of the Hoth Trooper Battle Packs. I only have the little 8080 here and I have a bunch of Snow Troopers from many different Lego designs. So I was able to fill it with just the one. Same with the Mando one. I'd love to get another one, but I'm honestly not sure what I'd do with the pieces from this. Perhaps once I get the Paz vs. Moth Battle Pack playset... I'm not sure if it's a battle pack or a playset. We're going to call it a playset. It's not an official battle pack, but it does come with four figures and just a really big door. But perhaps if I do end up picking that set or when I pick that up, because I really want the figures, I might change my mind on this. But for now, it's just a lot of slopes and some nice plates, but you don't even get the other angle to this one. So my favourite's got to be the 332nd clones. A bit of an Ahsoka bias, perhaps. Let me know what your favourite one is down in the comments below. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Of course, before you go, I would appreciate a like. And do subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. And thank you all so much for watching. May the bricks be with you. Always.